Well, some great news from the province released uh, not too long ago. Looks like we have an increase in the number of grizzly bears and, and a, a verifiable number. Maybe that's even more important is uh, that uh, over the last number of years, uh, Gordon Stenhouse uh, has been leading the charge in terms of finding uh, the exact number of bears or at least getting us close to an exact number. And he joins us today. Gordon, uh, thanks very much for taking some time and joining us here. You bet. Good afternoon. How did you approach the, the problem in the first place uh, in terms of setting up all the, the, the mechanisms that you needed to cover a, a province the size of Alberta to get a handle on the number of grizzly bears? Well, first of all, I, I, I should say that this work has evolved over time, like many other things over 23 years. Uh, it, it's, it's different. When we first started, it was back in the early days when um, the government was trying to figure out uh, the status of grizzly bears in the province. And there was some concern about numbers and a lot of the, the at that time, there were a lot of guesswork going on and we didn't really have good data. So the provincial government uh, asked our research group initially to start doing population inventory work. And we did that in a way that followed our research. So our research was going around the province and going uh, to each of the bear management units. And there were seven of them. There are seven bear management units. And these are genetically stink, distinct groupings of bears. And we would go in and we would call our bears. And then we would build these fancy models that showed us where the best habitat was. And then from that, we would design our population inventory work. And we moved up and down Alberta. We moved, we started in 2004 doing inventory and uh, headed south, so BMA 4, 5, 6, 7, and then we went up to BMA 2 by Grand Cash after that, and then things sort of stopped. So we never did an, an estimate for bear management unit 1, which is up by the Chinchaga, Peace River country, and we never did one for the uh, Swan Hills area, which is bear management unit number 7. So that all took a lot of time, and in the, in the meantime, there's other researchers that were doing work. Uh, for example, uh, Anne Morehouse was conducting her PhD work down uh, in the Waterton country, Bear Management Unit 6, and uh, had uh, repeated some of the work that we'd done in that area. And then there were some other folks uh, in Bear Management Unit 5 that were also trying to do inventory work. So there's lots of people doing this work. Um, and what's happened over time, in the early days, the government would just you know, fund it and, and uh, allow that to go forward. And then as time went on, we knew that we had to repeat these inventories to find out what the population trend was. So at that point in time, I was able to find other partners. And for example, in 2014, we had Jasper National Park join with a couple of forest companies and the government. And we repeated the inventory 10 years after the first one. And that inventory showed a population increase of, uh, of the population doubling in a 10 year period. So that was our first bit of good news and that was back in 2014. So the, a, a lump, number of things have changed. The only thing that hasn't changed is it's still the, the we consider bi as biologists the gold standard to use uh, DNA barbed wire hair snagging to figure out how many bears there are in an area. So that, that has stayed the same. So um, let's get to the to the bottom line. What uh, what is Alberta's uh, grizzly bear population standing at as of today, and and how did that compare to what you? Th and, and I know as a scientist you don't like to to guess, but there were certainly a lot of people that that did offer anecdotal uh, evidence of of a high population number. How close did those two numbers uh, uh, connect? Well, maybe I'll, I'll back up a little bit. So the newest uh, inventory results we had, so bear measure number four, that's the area between Highway 1 and Highway 11 down by Sundry, that country. Uh, that population doubled uh, from the year 2005 to 2018, so 13 years. So we had two population units that doubled. That's unit three and four. And then we, for the first time, we did an inventory in the Swan Hills where we found more bears and what we expected to be there uh, at the same time. So that's all the kind of good news. And at the same time, there's a, a, another group of researchers working up in the Chinchog area, or bear management unit number one, that found fewer bears than were estimated back in when the last status review was done in 2010. 
So there's some areas that have increased in numbers and some that we found fewer bears than what we had guessed were there. And one of the things, if you look back, you know, people say, so how's it changed over time and how's it compared to historic levels? We really can't answer that because we, all this work that I've re been referring to, those were the first inventories that the province had ever done. So we didn't have real uh, scientific based estimates before. Some people, had gone forward and said, okay, so if we had five bears per 1,000 square kilometers, and then they do the simple math and say, okay, it's a third of Alberta, and they figured out, you know, that there should be over 200 bear, 200,000 uh, uh, bears, or, you know, whatever the number was, it doesn't matter, but it was all, it was all theoretical. It wasn't based on, on science. So we don't have anything to compare to, but what we can say is that grizzly bear populations in the province in some areas have increased and doubled in size is a very good thing. Um, and other areas we found fewer bears than what we thought. So uh, all those things look positive in terms of grizzly bears uh, staying on the landscape. And recognize it's a really busy landscape. So that's with forestry and oil and gas and lots of recreation. So Bears have, bears have very plastic behavior. They're adaptable. They're an adaptable species and they're a generalist. So they have shown us that they can share their uh, habitat and ecosystem with us. Yeah, that, that leads very nicely into where I wanted to go with you on, on my next question. And that is, what do we take away in terms of knowing that there are in some instances, more bears on the landscape than we first imagined, and and that relationship between uh, bears and and us, and what what do we need to take away from that, and what has this study told us about what the tolerance between these two um, unrelated species is all about? Well, uh, from my personal point of view, what I would say is that we know that. Um, the populations in some areas have doubled in time. And what we haven't seen, which is important, is that we haven't seen a doubling in human bear conflicts. We haven't seen a doubling in the number of problem bears. So it's shown us that bears are on the landscape. They're moving around and avoiding us for the most part. Still, but some bears do get into trouble, no question. But it shows us that people can use the landscape, share it with bears, and bears are fairly tolerant. So um, that, that is a really good thing. I mean, it's, uh, it's something that, uh, I think people should remember just like, you know, you go to a national park and, uh, there's millions of people that go through national parks and there's bears in there and there's very few conflicts and it shows that bears can live on a shared landscape. Gordon, what's your what's your feeling? You you mentioned the that the landscape is busy. We have recreational, we have backcountry use, we have the forestry. Um, the the big conversation right now in Alberta is the coal. And what impact, if any, uh, bears are adaptable, as you indicated. Is there concern on your behalf that if uh, an increase in coal production uh, along the eastern slopes could have an impact on? on bears, bear movement, bear habitat, that type of thing? Well, maybe, I'll, again, I'll, I'll back up to another thing that, that'll lead into the coal question a bit. So the, one of the things that we ask ourselves as scientists is, so how could a population double in a, you know, a 10 or 13 year period? And we think that that's directly related to change in forest structure. So. We take older forests and make younger forests through uh, forest harvesting and management. And those younger forests have more food for bears. Uh, we open up the canopy to produce more light for berry crops. And at the same time, those younger forests have show a response to ungulates like white-tailed deer and moose, which are all bear foods. So the food increase and change has been good for bears, which will allow them to produce more cubs. At the same time, we don't think that human-caused mortality is high. That's our biggest concern about grizzly bear management is human-caused mortality. So um, along with, so I've said some things about, you know, forest harvesting and, and habitat change that has been good for bears. At the same time, we can't forget about the, the downside of natural resource extraction, which is roads and access. Roads and access, and as road density goes up, grizzly bear survival goes down. So now we lead in, so with that said, roads and access, 
So the more roads and access we put into bear habitat, whether it's for forestry or oil and gas or coal mining, we need to be concerned about that and recognize that you know a road to a bear is just an opening. Uh, it's when it becomes you know year-round motorized use. Uh, I've done research for quite a few years around Hinton here, where we have the Cheviot mine, which is is now closed down. Um, and that showed that when you control access on roads in, in a coal mining area, that human caused mortality associated with roads was almost zero. And at the same time, bears in and around coal mines, sure, they don't go right into the areas where there's pits, but in terms of moving around those areas, traveling through that, and actually if you've got a response to ungulates on coal mines, bears can do fairly well there. So bears aren't a species that are going to um, have a big negative outcome from coal mine. Uh, but I would still say that you want to be concerned about how you manage that landscape where you're going to do mining operations, if that's, if that's a decision that comes, um, and how you leave bears need cover. So we, we can't just have vast cleared areas. They need to have uh, forest cover for security for bears. So there's a, a number of different elements there. But the work we've done on Cheviot property, where our project started 23 years ago, has shown that bears are doing okay there. And they travel through and move around. And they find lots to eat, at least on our property, because there's lots of uh, bighorn sheep and elk and lots of other things. So if there's food, and bears can get that, they'll, they'll be there. Now that we have a baseline, um, are there plans, I guess, in the future to, to revisit and, and, and look again at, at what Alberta's grizzly bear population is and, and maybe what effect we have had on them um, 15, 20 years down the road? And, and if that answer is, pos- uh, is yes, we, we're going to do it, would it be a quicker study because you've already established sort of the, the methodology and, and that type of thing? Yeah, first of all, that's a, a policy question that I can't answer what the government's going to do in the future, so I can't answer that. However, what I, I would impress upon people is that, you know, we've spent a lot of money counting bears in Alberta, and uh, I don't take that lightly because conservation dollars are hard to come by. Uh, but we, we needed this inventory done, and we have good numbers now. At the same time, our group, in conjunction with all the other scientists that have done grizzly bear work in the province, has now prepared what we call a provincial genetic database. So all the bears that we've counted and found, whether it's research or population inventory from barbed wire or bears that have died from whatever, uh, we have all the genetic information. So we have this, it's, it's really a gold mine of data to understand what's going to happen in the future. So if one is going to get into monitoring populations, we don't always have to go back, you know, I think a lot of people want to go back and just repeat inventories. Very expensive to do, and uh, it, it takes a long time to do them when you've got seven of these units, and they're expensive to do between three and four hundred thousand dollars a year to do that, so it's a lot of money. But there's other ways to monitor populations that you can use genetic information, and uh, you can look at things like occupancy, uh, and because we can compare it to a, an established uh, long-term data set, you can understand survival and productivity and many other things that are important for grizzly bears. Got to imagine 23 years of, of work into this gourd. What's next for you? Are, are you going are you, are you to take a bit of a break now or do you have something else on the horizon? Well, as of April 1st, our grizzly bear research program that I've led for 23 years uh, has come to a, an end. Uh, I am uh, uh, my secondment. I've been on secondment to run this program from the provincial government for the past 23 years, and it's been it's been a wonderful experience and a highlight of my career. The next steps, um, I'm not sure right now. I'm back with the department, uh, but uh, I hope to still be involved in grizzly bear research somewhere, uh, doing doing things that I enjoy doing and hopefully passing on some knowledge and expertise about things that should happen as next steps in Alberta to make sure that my children and grandchildren might have the same opportunity to see this species in the wild. Well, we thank you so much for the the dedication that you've shown and and the information that you've brought. I think a lot of Albertans are pretty happy with uh, finally getting a, a sense of just how uh, big 
Alberta's grizzly bear population is. Uh, Gord, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thanks for your interest.